time has come to start the Finance and Purchasing Committee meeting for Monday, Perfect. May 15th, 2023. Roll call, please. Alderman Newsom? Present. Alderman Bolton? Present. Alderman Hayes? Alderman Florian? Present. Alderman Guzman? I know they're here. We have a quorum. Um, oh, you didn't say me. Did you say me? Did you, give, did you say my name? Oh, yeah, I did say present. Okay, item C, approval of the minutes. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from April 17th, 2023? So moved. I second. Motion by Alderman Florian, second by Alderman Bolton. Are there any questions to the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Item D, public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that uh, wants to speak to anything on the finance and purchasing agenda? Being none, new business, item A. Can I get a motion to go into executive session to discuss pending litigation pursuant to section 2, um, C11 of the Open Meetings Act? Can I get a motion? So I make a motion. Motion by Alderman Florian. Second by Alderman Martinez. S um, no, it have to be on the committee. Oh. Second by Alderman Bolton. Uh, You're going to go back anyway, though. <laughs> Uh, roll call, please. Alderman Newsom. Yes. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Hayes. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Guzman. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, Alderman Hayes. Motion to sit, Alderman Hayes. Motion by Alderman Florian, second by Alderman Bolton. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. We may, uh, we're going into closed session for uh, pending litigation. All right, can I get a motion to come back into uh, session? Can I get a motion? Can I get a motion? So moved. Seconded. Motion by Alderman Florian, second by Alderman Hayes to come back into session. And can I get a motion to seat Alderman Guzman? So moved. Seconded. A second. Motion by Alderman Florian, second by Alderman uh, Hayes. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. We'll go to item B, resolution of repealing Resolu resolution number 23-R-65, waiving competitive bidding and reapproving the purchase of a Chevrolet Silverado 2500 command vehicle from John Jones Auto Group in a radio from Chicom for the fire department. Can I get a motion? So moved. A second. Motion by Alderman Hayes. Second Thanks. by Alderman, um, Alderman Bolton. Mm -hmm. The city has identified the need to purchase a 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 all-wheel drive standard box crew cab truck for the use by the city's fire department as a command vehicle. John Jones Auto Group of Salem, Indiana is one of the few dealerships that have the vehicle in stock and is able to deliver the vehicle immediately. The city desires to purchase the vehicle from John Jones and the radio from Shycom in the total amount of $165,857.62. John Jones submitted a proposal to provide the vehicle equipped with emergency lights and axon camera system and other necessary equipment to allow it to be immediately put into service as a fire department command vehicle in the not to exceed amount of $127,730.45. Motorola radio vendor, Chicom, 
will not sell the required radio equipment to non-government agency, requiring the city to purchase the radio directly from SHICOM, independent of the vehicle, in the not to exceed amount of $38,000 $127.17. Chicom is a sole source vendor for the radio. So we had um, purchased this, approved it, the amount is gonna stay the same, but what we have to do is divide the amount up, where $127,730.45 will go to John Jones for the vehicle, and the $38,127.17 will go to um, Chai Khan. Are there any questions to this motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Guzman? Aye. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Bolton? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Item C, resolution approving the application and acceptance of a grant from Dickey Foundation for Ballistic Armor. Staff recommends the Finance and Purchasing Committee authorize the mayor to approve a resolution approving the application and acceptance of a grant from the Dickey Foundation for Ballistic Armor. Um, the fire department would like to submit an application for Dickey Foundation in the amount of $12,844 in grant funds to be used for the purchase of ballistic armor to protect department members when responding to potentially hostile events. This grant requires no local match. Um, and these, we're gonna get 12 helmets and vests and they will be replacing some that are already outdated and um, getting more. Can I get a motion? So moved. Motion by Alderman Florian. Second. Sec second by Alderman Hayes. Are there any questions to this motion? Roll call please. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Bolton? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Guzman? Aye. Motion carried, thank you. Item D, resolution approving the acceptance of the fiscal year 2023 co-responder grant from the Illinois Criminal Justice Information Authority. The police department applied for a co-responder grant program for a co-responder grant program from the Illinois Criminal Justice Information Authority, ICJIA. The purpose of the grant program is to provide funding directly to law enforcement agencies to hire social workers to work as a team with police officers in response to mental health calls, substance abuse calls, and calls dealing with homelessness and conduct follow-up work regarding victims of crimes and other people who may need social services. The city was awarded $2.3 million in co-responder grant funds, which will allow the police department to hire three new full-time social workers and three full-time police officers. There is no local match for this grant. Can I get a motion on the floor? So moved. moved. Motion by Alderman Bolton, second by Alderman Florian. Are there any questions to this motion? Um, D.C. Chastain, can you come forward, please? <coughs> Alderman Florian. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited about this, probably only to be matched by the excitement when we approved our lakefront coordinator. So this is number two in five years of, of grants that we've um, applied for and gotten that um, I think are really important. But I do have some important questions for you. So are there social workers available out there to hire? <laughs> so we have um, at least three that are interested already that are just waiting for us to put it out. Okay. So we know that we want to hire three and we have three interested. That's not to say that more won't put in and we have to go through the whole application process through human resources, but I know we have three that are interested right now. Okay, um, and it, it says there's no local match and, and there were a couple instances in the stuff that I read that talked about it, there was no cost to the city, but what about the pensions? We, we pay for that. So during the course of the grant period, they pay 100% of the benefits, fringe and all that stuff. Okay, so but even as, the police these, pension? These, these, these people will be hired on though and kept beyond the grant is our goal for the program we want to keep it so there will be a cost incurring down the road but it'll be budgeted into our budget okay 
But up, up this money includes the money for the police pensions. I don't know if they pay the pension. I'm not sure. I would, okay. Might know. I'd like to know the answer to that question. So, um, okay. And okay. then um, I, it was 47 pages long. So I'll admit I did not read the entire thing, but I read a lot of it. And there's a lot of different requirements for reporting certain, you know, how many clients, how much money you spent, who's low. So you guys have it all worked out who's going to do all this reporting, right? Because it's pretty, pretty extensive and pretty frequent that it has to be documented what's going on. I think probably finance is involved in some. I think, right. you know, the police we, we have a seizure grants now that we prepare reports for. So we're very familiar with how they operate. Also, um, in the software we're going to buy, it helps with that reporting procedure. So the soft, software we want to purchase is through a company called Casebook, and it's tailored for this program. And in part of that software, they help spit out those reports that will be okay. made ready for a CJ. And um, I think I got an idea of this when I read it, but I'm not sure the hours that you're going to have these people work. Is it going to be, I mean, I'm assuming they're not going to be Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. No, we're going to stagger the hours, which is we'll have three teams of two one officer team with one social worker and then their actual team. And then we have to we have to basically play around with the hours to see where we get our best bang for our buck. But it definitely won't be all six of them here working Monday through Friday, okay. eight to four. It really wouldn't make any sense. So they'll be staggered in their hours and in their days off to get the most average we can get. Okay, and then it also said that you were gonna serve X number of clients by June 30th. Well, it's already May 15th and you don't even have anybody hired yet, so. Right, so that, that was an error on the CJIS part. So we started this process about a year ago and they took forever to get their paperwork in order. They didn't even award us the money till December. And then they didn't even get the grant process rolling till we got it approved. So they know that already as it is, so they're gonna be extending all those deadlines out. Okay. And then my last question is, um, and you alluded to this, I mean, it's $2.3 million. So how long is that gonna last us, like with this program? Like when you said that you expect this to roll over into the city budget, but like in a year, in two years, in three years? So we haven't given us exact number of how many years they're gonna extend it on. We're hoping and we're asking for them to extend it for two additional years beyond that. So, so this is 2.3 million for a year? Right. Whoa. Right, okay. but, but they realize that in that short time period, it's hard to spend that uh, money based on the running a type of program. So talking to the people at ICESIA, their intent is also to extend the program out so we can have it drawn out longer and, and use those funds to make the program last longer. Okay, thank you. I have a question. In, I'll then just to expand on that. Uh, we are talking to the lobbyists this week. The, the state budget should come out this week. Uh, to extend that money, but then further, we are talking with our legislators to get annual appropriation. We are one of four communities yep. that are mandated to have this program. So, accordingly, we believe that we should have state funds for multiple years. Well, so that it, lots of times they like to do unfunded mandates. To us. <laughs> so we are mindful in in collectively working on that funding. Okay, thank you very much. Question. Thank you. I have a question. Alderman Bolton. Yes, uh, I want to thank you for, um, you know, we've had a lot of con uh, concerns about a social worker working along with that police officer. Can you just elaborate what this will look like in an average situation? How will the social worker will interact with our officers? So we have, um, there's programs that are currently running now, and then we model ours a lot of off of one that's running in Bloomington, Indiana. So I went out there for a conference just to see how that looks like and how they do it now. So ideally what would happen is we get, there's a couple different prongs to this, but one of them would be, um, we would have the officer and the social worker paired as a team. So we get calls for mental health. We're averaging anywhere from 30 to 40 calls a month um, on mental health calls. So ideally if that team is available and ready to go, they would hear the call go out on the radio and they would respond there as well. As long as the scene itself is safe, then we can have make it safe for the social worker to have that interaction with the person that's in need of assistance. So that's why we have the officer paired with them so that they have that you know safety piece with them at all times. Now officers on the road may still have to respond depending on what type of situation it is, but our goal is 
once that scene is safe, our regular patrol officers can go back to doing what they need to do and handle calls and, and protect the city while this team can stay here now and resolve this issue with the person. Also with the social worker, they're more trained than our officers are. So they're, our goal is to get a long-term solution. So our officers will go to these calls and they'll uh, they basically put a band-aid on it. They'll talk to the person, try to help them for the moment, you know, and get that situation resolved and then they move on to the next call. But with the social worker team, our goal is to get them there. They can resolve this situation hopefully permanently by interviewing them, see what actual social services they need, um, conduct follow-ups, get them and refer them to those services, and even if necessary, get them a ride there. So our goal is to have this social worker team fix this problem permanently, not just put a Band-Aid on it so that we keep going to these same calls over and over again. And also so we can get that person who's in need to truly the help that they really do need. Thank you so much, I'm, thank I'm glad to get that. Thank you. Yes, I got a question. Alderman Guzman. Thank you. Um, Okay, so is this only for social workers and how many, $2.3 million, how many people does that hire? Or is this for equipment or what else can be used? It is also for equipment. So we, we took a study of, the, of the, the model agency we looked at. They're a little bit smaller than us and they have three social workers that works good for them. So based on our size and our hours we work and the amount of calls we have, that's why we came up with the three. So it's three social workers, three police officers. Then there's a lot of equipment, cars, um, radios, vests, all that stuff will be paid for by the grant. So, um, and one of them is coming up on the agenda today is another training apparatus that we have that um, was specifically designed for mental health. That's a virtual reality training. And that stuff, you can program it to um, teach this initial team on scenarios and, and live-based training where we don't have to take other officers off the street and have 10 people here to create a training scenario environment. You could do it through the computer, through virtual reality. And then this team, you could set it up and this team will go in there and you can have a person that they're interacting with and we control on the laptop what's being said, the interactions that are happening based off of what they're saying. So we can make it as real as we want it. Thank you. And then, um, I'm still not done. I mean, so is it only for mental health or are we talking domestic and I mean, because a so lot of this domestic stuff. So it's mental health, substance abuse, homelessness, anything really where you could put a, a social service tab on. There is an also part of the grant in the way it was written, it's in the bill was there's victims assistance as well. So like domestic, if you have, if we go to a scene of domestic and say the, uh, the victim is in need of social services and they're a victim of domestic battery, they can also help them as well. Maybe they need uh, assistance in finding a house. Maybe they need assistance in some mental care. Some of our domestic violence victims, they'll be victims of violence that happened from a person who has mental health. So maybe they have an older child that's suffering from mental health and they beat the parent. So now the parent is actually victim of domestic violence, but it's because the child needs further assistance and they don't have that assistance. Either they don't know about it, they don't know where to go to get it, or you know, just not educated on it. So basically work. what you're saying, those counselors can be used in any type of situation that needs to be done. Yes, okay. and that's our goal. And then there's a one last piece of it as well as officer wellness as well. So every year our officers get interviewed and go through a wellness program. This program will also take care of that aspect of it where now we actually hire those services out through a private company. We won't have to do that anymore. This, these social workers will be able to pick up that part of it as well and take care of any mental mental health that you know officers may need. I have a question for you. I, I, first of all, I embrace that. It's a very wonderful uh, concept. I've uh, been in human services field for a very long time, but my question would be, like, because Waukegan is such a diverse population, how would you match up a social worker to meet the demands of that, that the culture part of it? Or, you know, how, how, how would that look like as far as you have a, a Latino who's very limited in, in, in English, and, uh, would you would you consider how would you assign a social worker to that certain individual or that or that person? So we have, and actually, one of the social workers that I know that's actually interested in it is speaks full uh, Spanish. She's a Latin, Latin uh, sorry, um, Hispanic female. She is a social worker now. She's very interested in the program, and it's one of the people we're hoping that she applies and she's interested in that. 
But like everything, you know, when we have the people apply through HR, we're definitely going to look at all their backgrounds, Absolutely. what criteria they have, how do they fit our community, and, and everything like that. It would be ideal if we can get Spanish speakers. It would be ideal if we can get just a little mix of everything, you know, to, to relate to our community. But that's only going to be depending on what people apply. You know, that, that part we have no control over. But I, like I said, I do say the one social worker we're very interested in that actually did this program before in another city. So it's not only does she have experience in running a program like this, she also is, very, is bilingual as well. So that, that would help us tremendously. And then the officers itself too, that'd be another thing we would take in consideration. If we have 10 officers put in for this program, then we're gonna look at what criteria do they have to offer the program as well. So even though we're gonna hire three officers for this program that the grant pays for, those three officers we hire don't go in the program. We take three officers that are already working and put them in the program, and the three officers we hire then backfill those positions. Because what we want is experienced officers that have that experience and talent in this, in this arena to be in this unit. Thank you. That helped make sense. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you might want to just sit right there yeah, in case uh, there's a question for item E. Uh, no more questions? Can I get a roll call, please? Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Bolton? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Guzman? Aye. Motion carried. Item E, resolution approving the purchase of an Apex virtual reality training simulator device for the police department in a not to exceed amount of $67,500. Staff recommends and the Finance and Purchasing Committee authorize the mayor to approve a resolution approving the purchase of an Apex virtual reality training simulator device for the police department and not to exceed amount of $67,500. And this is a part of a, the co-responder grant and will be reimbursed to the city at uh, 100%. Can I get a motion on the floor? So moved. Motion by Alderman Florian. Seconded. S second by Alderman Hayes. Are there any questions to the motion? Deputy Chief Chastain just uh, talked a little bit about this. I do. Alderman Guzman. I think this is a great program. I hope it goes forward because this will give you the more real life training for our officers that need it. I spoke a little bit to, uh, I can't remember the commander's name, unfortunately. I apologize to the commander. Uh, it is great. This is this will give you kind of a life experiences because officers can only do so much with uh, what's training. So this will basically give you the equipment to actually kind of be in this situation then and, and and your eyes and mind work with that. And I think it's a good thing. I think it should go forward and hopefully everybody votes high for it. Thank you. Also, um, DC Chastain, we talked a little bit this afternoon. Can you give uh, uh, the information regarding the updates where they'll be free? Yeah, so as it stands right now, if you purchase it with the company now, the, all the updates come in free for us. Down the road, as this gets bigger and more popular, they plan on having, you know, charging for updates. But once we're grandfathered in and we purchase it, then we will never have to pay for the updates for the software. We talked to um, Aurora Police Department, who has it now. We actually went out there and demoed this, and they expressed that exactly. You know, when they have, they've had it for four years, I think now, and every update they've gotten has been no charge to them. And the company is really good, very law enforcement friendly. Anything they need, they pick up the phone, they call them, and they send things out within a couple days. So um, they haven't had any issues with it in respect to that. All right. Thank I have you. a question. I'm not in the committee, um, but I just have a question regarding the, um, the, the grant. Um, can, can you use some of that grant to uh, like use certain cameras to monitor behavior in certain areas where, of the city where it might be really, um, you see a lot of crime? Is that something you can use? Not, not for this, no. Not for that? Unfortunately, no. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Roll call, please. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Hayes. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Guzman. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Item F, resolution approving an application and acceptance of a grant for the U.S. Department of Transportation for a fire boat. 
The Walking and Fire Department desires to submit an application to the United States Department of Transportation through the US DOT uh, 2023 Port Infrastructure Development Program grant funds to, um, for grant funds to be used for the purchase of a new fire and rescue boat. The William E. Munson Company has submitted a quote to sell the fire boat to the city in the amount of $545,386. If received, the program will provide 80% of the cost of the fire boat and a total amount of $436,308.80. And if the city receives the award, the city will contribute uh, matching funds of 20% of the cost of the fire boat in a uh, total amount not to exceed $109,077.20. According to the city budget, the funds will be drawn from the fixed after uh, fixed asset replacement fund only if the grant is awarded to the city. Uh, motion on the, can I get a motion? So moved. Motion Second. by Alderman Hayes. Second. Second. Second by Alderman Bolton. Are there any questions to this motion? Got a roll call please. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Hayes. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Guzman. Aye. Motion carried. Item G, resolution approving a release and settlement for Shanika Williams in case number 23CV00941. <coughs> motion to approve a resolution uh, approving the release and settlement with Shanika Williams in case number 23CV0041 uh, in the amount of $200,000 in ongoing federal litigation filed by Shanika Williams as a mother of a um, next friend of juvenile. Case number 23CV00941. Can I get a motion on the floor? So moved. I motion second. by Alderman Florians. Second by Alderman Bolton. Are there any questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Hayes. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Guzman. <coughs> Aye. Thank you, motion carried. Um, we have, uh, the Finance Department uh, Committee has uh, <coughs> given us some highlights on the, um, the different reports. I think everyone should have a sheet. And since we are, what time is it? Uh, we have a presentation by the finance uh, director on our audit. So if anyone, uh, if no one minds, we'll go right into the uh, uh, audit presentation. Can I just ask one thing? I promise sure. it'll be quick. Sure, Alderman Florian. So item H is our casino monthly report. This is now the third month that we've gotten money from the casino and we still have not uh, spoken as a council, I think we decided to wait till the new aldermen were seated of exactly what we're going to earmar earmark that money for. And I think that's a conversation that needs to happen relatively soon since this <coughs> money is flowing in. The so mayor. Um, mayor. Asking you guys in this three week break that you have to be setting up meetings specifically with me. Okay. So it'll be two at a time, no more than that. Um, but that's what you get a three week break here and I need your input on that and we will go over that and then kind of go over as a group what we want to do. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, It Mayor. has not been ignored. We just wanted to get them through their first meeting before we started addressing that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Any more questions? All right, Mr. Schultz, we'll turn it over to you. As a way of introducing the, the audit for fiscal year 22, uh, we can say it was a very successful year we started out with a, we got a clean bill of health, of course, from our auditors. That means that they found our financial statements to present very fairly with the city's true and accurate financial position. Uh, according to the lead uh, auditor, the auditor uh, manager, Martha Trotter, in our opinion, the financial statements present fairly in all material respects, respective financial position of the governmental activities, business type activities, discreetly presented the component units, each major fund and the aggregate remaining fund information of the city of Waukegan as of April 30th, 2022. 
it's always good to get a clean bill of health from the auditors. The, um, when we talk about the budget, for the most part, you're all familiar with the different funds. The uh, general fund, special revenue funds, debt service funds, capital project funds. When you look at the audit, the audit is presented with the financial statements for fund categories, but also by activities. There is something called governmental activities we'll talk about. And those are made up of the four governmental, governmental funds. The general fund, special revenue funds, debt service fund, and capital project funds. Then you have business type activities. Those are made up of two business type activities that we have, the water and sewer, uh, water and sewer utility and a motor vehicle parking system. Those are business type activities. We have internal service funds that provide services to other, other departments of the city. The employee benefit plan for health insurance and risk management for uh, liability insurance. And of course our fiduciary funds, police and fire pension. So in examining all of these funds and all the activities, the auditors have found that our financial statements accurately reflect the financial activities in all those funds. The major funds, the non-major funds, and the discrete funds. The discrete uh, presented unit is the is a library. That's, that's a discreetly presented component unit. We started the year of fiscal year 22 with several meetings with Mayor Taylor. And she set forth our objectives for the year. And she was very specific what she was looking for. One, she said in preparing the budget for the year, be, uh, be very cautious with our revenue projections. Be conservative, be prudent, be responsible in our revenue projections. Secondly, she demanded that we present a financial plan that's sustainable, that is a, a plan not only for one year, but we can carry on that plan to future years so that we know we're, we're going to be two, three, four years down the road. Our third requirement was that we strengthen our fund balances, the net position of our funds. We have to make sure that we can prepare ourselves for unforeseen emergencies, a potential recession, and also inflationary pressures. So she wanted us to enhance and strengthen our fund balance. Fourthly, demanded a, that we create a sustainable and ongoing fixed asset replacement fund so that when it's time to replace the fixed assets in police, fire, public works, they have the, have the money on hand to do so, and that we're not deferring replacements over um, multiple periods of time. And fifth, the budget to present or provide personnel and resources to meet growing demands of public safety, public works, and economic development. And we believe in that in fiscal year 22, we accomplished all five objectives. In terms of the highlights, and you'll, you'll see how the objectives were accomplished. Revenues within the government activities, that's those four government, government funds, increased $14.9 million in fiscal year 22, or 13%. Expenses were held below the prior year, declined by $15 million compared to the prior year's expenditures. Our fund balance and governmental funds increased by $16 million to a total of $70 million. Citywide expenses declined by $16.5 million. Our citywide net position going across all funds improved by $18.3 million, or 14%. Total assets of our governmental funds increased by $31 million. Assets within the business type activities increased by 4.6 million. Our net pension assets increased by 10 million, or 28.6%. In addition to the governmental activities and business type activities, if you look at the general fund, that's what so many people look primarily at. General fund revenues and were increased by $14.6 million compared to the prior year. Revenues exceeded budget across the city. Expenditures came in under budget across the city. All operating departments came in under budget. 
general fund revenues exceeded expenditures by $12.5 million, increasing our net position from 28 million to 40 million. Outstanding water and sewer bonds were reduced by 1.4 million. Outstanding general obligation bonds were reduced by 10 million. Police pension long-term debt was reduced by $14 million. And a real plus is when Moody's did their credit rating of the city, they took in consideration the results of our operation in fiscal year 22. They reaffirmed the city's A2 credit rating and they removed its, neg its negative outlook that was, that was given in 2021. So reaffirmed the credit rating, removed the negative outlook. The major general fund revenues showed significant increases over the prior year. Sales tax increased $2.2 million in fiscal year 22 compared to 21, a 19% or almost a 20% increase. Home rule sales tax in increased by $3 million. Video gaming tax increased by $1 million. The city share of state collected income tax increased by $2.6 million or 25.7%. <coughs> and corporate property replacement taxes increased by $5.4 million, 131% to a total of $9.2 million. So you can see from a revenue and expenditure standpoint and a strengthening of our net position, fiscal year 22 was a rather successful year. Uh, we anticipate uh, following fiscal year 22 with similar results in fiscal year 23. We are maintaining our control over expenditures. Our revenues were conservatively budgeted. They will come in uh, greater than budget. We'll be improving our net position once again. Across, oh, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to change this. Across government activities, you can see the, the increases in our major revenue sources. Sales tax is up 20%, home rule sales tax 28%, hotel motel tax increased 85%, food and beverage by 20%. We also have the ARPA fund, that's the American <coughs> Rescue Plan funds. We only show $1.4 million in revenue even though we received uh, 9.7 million. We don't recognize the revenue until we have the expenditure to go with it. We expensed 1.4 million last year we recognize 1.4 million in revenue. You'll show a much larger uh, expenditure and revenue in fiscal year 23. In terms of uh, expenses, expenses went down from 128 million to 113 million, a $15 million decrease, almost a 12% decrease in expenditures. Changes in our net position. In, in fiscal year 21, our net position went down. Went down by 17.5 million. In 22, in fiscal year 22, our net position was increased, enhanced by 13 million. That's a $30 million swing between fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22. Again, showing you the strength of fiscal year 22. There was a very significant rebound following COVID in, in Waukegan in fiscal year 22. Uh, businesses opened up, sales tax is strong, corporate profits were up, which means our replacement taxes went up. Uh, inflation increased the wages, income tax showed a healthy increase. In business type activities, that's the water and sewer and the motor vehicle parking system. A very, very little change in revenue from 21 to 22, but our expenditures went down by 700,000. Uh, our net income after, after some transfers was $5.3 million. So we increased net position of the utility by $5.3 million or 6.2%. This is simply a chart that shows uh, the major rev revenues or the governmental revenues and business type revenues. Charges for services, 32 million or 22%. Property taxes, 37 million, 26%. 
Other taxes, $41 million, 29%. In terms of expenses, public safety, $80 million of the total $124 million was for public safety. 64 or 65% of expenditures in 22 went for police and fire for, for public safety expenditures across the city. Public works was another $16.5 million or 13%. Water, sewer, parking fund, $11 million or 9% of total. One of our charges was to do whatever, do what we could to have a sustainable budget, but also do what we can to strengthen our net position, strengthen our fund balances so that we can draw upon fund balances if there came a rainy day. Um, we can't predict the future. We can go out two or three years pretty comfortably. You start talking four or five years, uh, it, it gets a little more difficult, and for that you need a, a healthy fund balance. You look at our general fund. Uh, the, our, our major funds are the general fund, the garbage fund, motor fuel tax, and debt service funds. Those are our major funds. The general fund increased its net position from 28.1 million to 40.6 million, increased it by 12.5 million dollars, or 44%. In total, the major funds increased by $17 million in fund balance, a total of 42%. Non-major funds, those are primarily all the funds that you see in the special revenue, uh, special revenue funds, other than the garbage fund and the motor fuel tax, there are also special revenue funds, but due to the size of the revenues that they contribute, they're a major fund. You can see those uh, changes in fund balance across those uh, non-major funds, but the total Net position increased $16 million from $54 million to $70 million. Sorry, I think you need to click it. Yeah. Uh, general fund revenues, we talked about the strength of the general fund in fiscal year 22. Fiscal year 21 revenues were $78.6 million in general fund. In fiscal year 22, they increased to $93.2 million, an increase of $14.6 million in one year for an 18.6% increase. Charges for services went up 54%, permits 7.7%, other taxes 21%, property taxes 15%. It was a healthy year. General fund expenses. Expenses increased by 4.8 million. 3.8 million of that was for public safety, for police and fire. Another 700,000 for debt service. We paid off uh, a, a major lease that we had in, in public works. Fund balances over the last 10 years. It's interesting to look at what we've been doing over the last 10 years. In all the years I've been doing this, I've always liked to maintain a general fund balance of 25% of expenditures. If you look at the last 10 years, our fund balances are, some are unassigned, that is, they're not spoken for. They're unassigned fund balances that can be used in case of an emergency. There are some fund balances that are non-spendable. You can't spend it, been, they've been committed for some purpose. And we have the stabilization fund. If you look at the unassigned fund balance in the general fund, it was 11.9 or almost $12 million in 2013, $33 million, almost $34 million in fiscal year 22, which is 42% of actual expenditures. What we've done with that, we've already transferred $10 million of that 33 into our fixed asset replacement fund so that we can fund the replacement of police vehicles, uh, public works equipment and vehicles, uh, fire engines, fire trucks, uh, ambulance. Uh, so $10 million of the, 20, of the 33, so the 42 million, 42% is, is now down to about 29%. But if you look at what we've been trying to do, we've been trying to maintain that 
that fund, ba fund balance at or above 25%. But in addition to that, on the side fund balance, we have the stabilization fund. We try to maintain it at 8%. That's the goal each year, 8% of our projected expenditures go into the stabilization fund and it sits there for the rainy day. Uh, our debt, our general obligation debt, uh, two years ago in fiscal year 21, it was $107 million. We retired $10 million, $10.4 million in fiscal year 22, 9.7% of our debt. So it went from 107 to 97 million. In the current, in, in the year we just finished in fiscal year 23, we retired another $9 million for another 9% of our debt is gone off the books. In fiscal year 24, that's the year we just budgeted for, we will retire another $5.6 million or another 6% to bring that balance down 82.7 million. <coughs> Long-term obligations. In the governmental activities, we had last year, I, I'm sorry, in, two, in 2021, $416 million in total obligation. We reduced that by $25 million in fiscal year 22 to $391 million. Business type activities, we reduced that by $2 million. Uh, in total, we reduced our long-term debt by $28 million in fiscal year 22 in one year alone. And what you saw in the prior screen having to do with our debt service, uh, we retired $25 million in, in three years of our debt. The rest of the presentation simply shows you in, in graphic form. Uh, government act, uh, governmental activity revenues, you can see the big in increase from 111 million to 126 million, a $15 million increase. Governmental expenditures, big, big decrease. From 128 million down to 113 million, a decrease of 15 million dollars, or almost 12 percent. Our change in net position in 2021, we had a deficit of 17.5 million. In 2022, a surplus or an increase in net position of 13 million dollars, a change of 174 percent. Business type activities, same picture. Increase in our net position, 4.7 uh, million dollar increase in 21, a 5.3 million dollar increase in 22. General fund revenues, we've talked about, it increased almost 15 million dollars in fiscal year 22, 18%, almost 19%. Expenses went up 6.3%. Far far than covered by the increase in, in revenues. And finally, in terms of the general fund balance, we can see the general fund balance, uh, 31 million in 2017, increase of to 40.6 million in 2022. On the signed portion, from 25.7 million to 33.8 million. So we must admit, uh, I, I think in terms of the, the marching orders uh, we were given uh, by Mayor Taylor at the beginning of the year to uh, successfully address certain of the key issues that she was very much concerned about, I think the 22, uh, the fiscal year 22 budget did that and the results of operations show that. Uh, we have primarily the, the same objectives in fiscal year 23 and going forward into in 24 to maintain a strong financial position, to be very prudent, responsible, and conservative in revenue projections, and to hold our uh, department heads to stay within their budgets. And uh, that's it for fiscal year 22 audit. Yeah. Are there any questions? Um, I have just one question. Oh, this is kind of off the, rec or off the subject a little bit, but do we know what we'll be able to add to the stable or to the um, capital replacement fund from this last year yet? Ten million. Oh, good job. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Question. Any other questions? Alderman Bolton. Yes. Thank you for the report. It was quite thorough. 
but if you could go back to the financial highlights for me, Paige, and I'm sure you may have already said it, but if you could reiterate uh, the fact that it says revenue within uh, government activity increase. Can you explain or, or summarize what some of those factors that caused the increase and what are some of the factors that caused the decrease? What page are you on? What page? Oh, uh, maybe your fourth page. It says finan financial highlights. The so the question is, what was the factors that caused the government yeah, activity yeah. increase? Page five. So, decrease. yeah, if you, and the decrease. Yeah, revenues across okay. the government activities increased uh, fourteen point eight million dollars, or thirteen percent. Yeah, what are some uh, of the factors yeah, that caused page, that? Page uh, page eight of the handout. I'm sorry, say sure it again. You that, can you go to page eight on the slide? Shows the different uh, revenue sources. Is that the page she wants? Page eight. Okay. That's I thought she said. The governmental activities come from uh, revenues within four fund types. The general fund, your special revenue funds, your debt service fund, and your capital project fund. Uh, they increased from 111 million to 126 million almost a $15 million increase. Uh, the biggest increase in sales tax uh, went from 11 million to 13.2 million and increased $2.2 million, 20% increase. Home rule sales tax increased $2.7 million or 28%. Telecommunications tax went down by 200,000. It shows it went down by 13%, but that's because that number is uh, the $1.6 million base is, is, is lower. Uh, local use tax declined by 500,000. Utility taxes went up by 300,000 or 7%. Food and beverage taxes went from 1.6 million to 1.9, increased to 300,000 or 20%. Hotel motel taxes increased by $500,000 from 600,000 to 1.1 million. And that's because uh, uh, with food and beverage and hotels, the economy opened up. People were traveling, they were going to the restaurants, they were staying at the hotels. Um, they opened up after COVID. They were all closed during COVID. Revenues went down. Businesses suffered. Uh, food and beverage taxes, of course, suffered because our, our merchants are suffering. Uh, fiscal year 22 saw an increase. Fiscal year 23 will see an even bigger increase. Our charges for services, uh, went up from 15.5 million to 16.3 or $800,000. Income taxes showed a big increase. Income taxes in 21 showed uh, $10.2 million. In 22, one went up to $12.8 million, a $2.6 million increase, or 26%. Inflation drove up wages. Uh, it was good economy, people were working. Unemployment was uh, at an all time low. For the property replacement tax, it showed a huge increase from $4 million to 9.2, a $5.2 million increase or 131%. Uh, most of that had to do with the uh, success the corporations had in corporate profits. We get a certain percentage of the corporate profits. And also uh, the amount of money that was set up for refunds that were, were distributed to local units of government. Uh, video gaming tax, there again, the, the gaming parlors were, were closed through much of 2021. They opened up again in 22, an increase of $1 million in video gaming tax, 125%. That's pretty much, uh, pretty much a change in the revenues. Does that help? Thank you so much. Welcome. <laughs> I got a question. <clears throat> so basically what you're saying is that... All the right, uh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I'll do it. Go ahead. I spoke too quickly. Um, so basically what you're saying is that uh, the pandemic uh, and the closure of the businesses affected everything and that's what we're seeing the spike in? That's certainly true. Yeah. In 2021, the pandemic affected all, all of our local businesses. You know, many of our shops closed, um, some permanently. They opened again in, in 22. So that's, 
That's why you saw a big, <laughs> big surge in, in revenue in 22. Uh, in the beginning of the year, we weren't anticipating such a, such a strong recovery. And that's why we took a very conservative approach to revenue projections. And that's why the revenues exceeded our projections. And uh, we held the expenditures down, uh, not anticipating such strong growth in the revenue base. And so you had a, a large increase in revenue. You kept, you kept expenditures down, so you had a nice increase in our net, in our net position. Yeah, because some of these are really big jumps from 21 to 22. I mean, uh, for being closed, and then I guess everybody was tired of staying. They are not the normal uh, jumps that you would uh, ordinarily see. So what are we? Uh, okay, so do we have any projections for the following year or not yet? What I see is 21, 22, and then 0 0.5, 0 0.22. Our, our fiscal year 23, the fiscal year we just finished, mm -hmm. our revenues will exceed last year. Oh, awesome. Okay. And our fiscal year 24 budget that we just completed, you, you just approved, uh, we took a, again, we took a conservative look at revenues. Uh, we can't expect our revenues to keep increasing as they have in 22 and 23. Yes. Our revenues are actually budgeted at 95% of, of, of fiscal year 23 actual receipts. We budget them 5% below. So that we don't get short, uh, don't fall, don't don't find ourselves falling short of revenues. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Uh, item four, adjournment. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Alderman Florian. Second. Second by Alderman Hayes, to adjourn at 7:02 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Aye.